going on people of the internet? This is the off-brand SCX-102 all-metal crawler. <laughs> so you probably see these things around if you're looking at RC stuff, looking at crawler stuff. Everybody's got them. They sell them on eBay, they sell them on Amazon, they sell them Banggood, they sell them everything that you've never heard of, ads on Facebook. And they say they use SCX-102 in the name. And there's a lot of stuff wrong with that. For one, it's nothing like an SCX-102. The axles look like SCX-102, but they are not the same. Um, but yeah, so a lot of different options out there. There's so many places selling these, so many different names. Ostar, uh, some of them don't even use brand names at all. But it, yeah, most people probably know what you're getting. But I got one just to see. I, I've always kind of been curious about these tube frame crawler things that we've seen out of China for a long time. And uh, I happen to have some rewards points with a somewhat trustworthy business. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. This video is not sponsored by anybody. I bought this with my own money. And, yeah, I'm a little disappointed, but... I'm looking at this, I've been doing RC stuff for 30 years. Just, yeah, pretty much 30 years while I'm old. But, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things I would have done different. A lot of things I would prefer. But if you're coming at this, if you're buying something like this for a 7 or 8 year old, it might be alright. But, let's go through what's wrong with this thing. So, step one, sold as RTR. Well, it's not. It, this one comes with tires, wheels, and a motor. It was $180. Um... They don't actually, the place I got it didn't actually sell one RTR, but they call them all RTR. It's mostly pre-assembled. You saw I had to do a little bit, put the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, put the motor transmission in, put the motor on the transmission, and I had to do the wonderful beadlocks. Plastic wheels, there are 2.2s, tires are, eh, looking. Um, they're soft, no foams, no nothing. The beadlock rings are some sort of, a thing that resembles aluminum. Um, yeah, lots of issues with the uh, tire wheel setup, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So the cage itself, I think it looks pretty cool. We've got some kind of little skull looking gas mask doodad on the sliders. Kind of neat. We've got a basically the same thing as RC four wheel drive radio box, and it's mounted in the front where you would maybe put your battery. It really doesn't have a spot for a battery. Again, another issue. I kind of feel like this was designed by the parts bin. They just, they had some axles, they had some of these frames, they just kind of threw it together with the generic shocks, tires, and wheels. Some stuff doesn't actually really work together. Um, one issue I'm having, other than the ridiculous ride height and the raked stance with the raised back, the drive shaft angles are pretty harsh. And these shocks, I don't even know if these are adjustable. Yeah, they do screw down, but not any more than they already are. So, realistically, you would want this to sit where it is bottomed out and then have more of a droop set up. But, yeah. Um, some of the issues here with the chassis and the, the welding. My favorite oddity is we have, basically, we have chassis rails in the front and then skips the spot metal. We have chassis rails here in the center that hold our transmission. And then they just stop, and we have a little piece of metal wire welded in up here, and then we have chassis rails again at the back. <laughs> and I think there's enough tube work going on that it's it would probably it's probably gonna be sturdy enough. I think it it feels pretty solid. The welds it's, it's, there's a little bit of undercutting, but not bad. Um, I think the the chassis itself will hold up pretty well. As far as the ergonomics of everything else, I don't know. Um, you can see here it's kind of bent, like our front plate here is horizontal with the ground, the rest of the cage is jacked up in the back. Bit odd, but um, I guess they're going for a look maybe. The giant stinger in the front, it, it's kind of a cool looking deal. I hate this vertical windshield though because that really limits what kind of hard body you can put around it. Um, next issue. So, pretty sure the shocks don't have fluid in them. Yeah, I'd say they don't. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm even bother with it. The transmission 
is plastic. So this was sold all metal, all metal chassis, all metal drivetrain. Said it in the description. I read it four or five times. I knew it wasn't going to have it, but I risked it anyway. The transmission cross member is SCX101. And the transmission is basically like an SCX101 as well. It's original, but the cross member is aluminum. And it actually feels like a decent part. It's it's pretty high quality. Looks like the stuff you would buy for an SCX101. Transmission itself, however, is plastic, and your spur gear is plastic, and your main gear on your output shaft is plastic. The other two are metal, but the housing itself is not hobby grade plastic. It is pretty pretty toy grade filling. Um. It's not as durable. The wheels actually feel like they're kind of a hardened plastic. They feel like a hobby grade thing, but the transmission housing itself is definitely not. Um, drive shafts are metal. They have these horrible rings that hold the pins in, and you really need to put something over them, like some shrink tube or something, that really keep it all together. But they are metal. I said it was metal. Um, that's about it for up top. Let's flip it over on the bottom. So we do have metal links. Links actually feel pretty good. Plastic ends. Boo. Um, plastic axle housing. That was another thing that the item description clearly said. All metal axles. I'm not even taking axles apart. I, I highly doubt there's metal gears in there. I don't know that for a fact. But I've seen some other videos on these. All these SCX-102 clones that are out there. The gearing is different size, so you can't swap an actual axial gear set into this housing. It's laid out a little different in diff. Bearings are different size, so they just stole the look, I guess. <laughs> um, the axles actually feel a little bit better than hobby grade or hobby grade toy grade. They're not the fit and finish on them is just not not there though. It's not as precise as an axial product would be, but they're not bad. So again, reiterate what I said. If you're buying this for a little kid, you know this is 180 bucks. You radio, ESC, speed control, or you know servo, and you're ready to go. You, you might could buy a used SCX10. I haven't had much luck. I've won an SCX10 again for a while, and everybody around me, like you look at them on the marketplace and stuff, they're ridiculous. Just scratched up, beat up, you know, or even original SCX 10 ones they're wanting three, four, five hundred dollars for. It's like, yeah, I get that it costs a lot of money to, to upgrade it and keep it running and do all the stuff you've done to it, but it looked like hell, and that's not something somebody's going to pay four hundred dollars for. But, uh, yeah, that's neither here nor there. So, for, you know, two, 250 you could get out into this pretty cheap. If you really know what you're looking for, truck was 180 put it together cheap Traxxas speed controller and Traxxas radio or something you can find readily available you know you can get into it pretty cheap Traxxas servos are decent if you, you know if this was a beginner rig so uh, it could be a good entry level unit but uh, yeah I don't know so the biggest issue I found it has aluminum 12 millimeter hexes that are wide they have the uh, you know you put your pin through your axle put your 12 millimeter hex on there the type that clamp and you put the screw in it and tighten it one they don't clamp around tight enough to stay so you just tighten it down and it still falls off and your pin falls out and B they're too wide and they're too wide so that the tires will clear somewhat the shock this one is all over that and it does have a pretty good turning radius looks like the SCX 10 2 axles were known for that but this is all up in the shock like that's not ever gonna drive in that configuration um, yeah so that's not gonna work and B with that extra wide hex we're not even able to get the nut on to the nylon it has a nylon lock nut for your hub it won't even get to the nylon so as soon as you start driving these are gonna start coming off and you're gonna lose a tire so again parts been special just kinda thrown together not really thinking things through um, the motor, I forgot about the motor, it says it's a fancy schmancy 55 turn something or another. It actually looks kind of cool, it looks decent. And uh, I haven't run it so we don't know yet, it could not even work. Um, another big issue, the pinion spur. So the, the pinion gear they give you to 
line up with the spur gear, they don't line up. So no matter which way you put the spur gear or the pinion gear on the shaft of the motor, whether it's got the lock on the outside or the lock nut on the inside, it's off. So you're never going to have a perfect gear mesh. It's always going to be off by just like three millimeter either way you go. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> So I think that's it. I'm gonna keep this short, sweet, and to the simple. Um, if you're looking for a serious crawler, this is not the one for you. If this is your first rig and you're, you know, budget-minded and you're just looking to try it out, then this may not be a bad route to go. But it is what it is. I appreciate y'all watching. Oh, also, lots of spare screws that have no purpose whatsoever. There, I got some more flathead three millimeter screws, which there's absolutely no purpose for. There's no more recessed mounting holes. Um, there's no hardware for a servo, uh, lots of extra screws for the bead locks. And at least they are bead locks. Uh, the anodized finish on them did scratch off a little bit if you accidentally hit it with your wrench and you're putting the screws on. But um, yeah, I think my plans for this, we're gonna scrap these gigantic, I don't know, these are probably 130 millimeter shocks. At least the back ones are. The front ones may be shorter, actually. And we're going to scrap those. I'm going to scrap these giant 2.2s. I'm going to run a scale shock. I want to do like a droop setup. We're going to experiment with that. And this is going to kind of be a test rig, try out some stuff. I've got to get it. Actually, I have a motor and transmission I can use for this. So, uh, yeah, look for that to come. We're going to have some fun with it. I'm going to run a 1.9 tire on it, probably. We'll fix the hub issue. I've got, actually, it's a Novak... A rooster crawler setup with a 55 turn motor. It was geared pretty low, but I'm gonna try some stuff out on this. Um, and again, it's it's completely adjustable. All these holes, you can move the shocks in any different angle you want. Right now, they are pretty much straight up and down, and that's affecting our stance quite a bit. But uh, it's not stuff that we can't overcome. Uh, I really one other thing, another problem I see is with this ride height and our uh, steering link. It's going to be a pretty harsh angle, so definitely getting it down lower is going to be a start. Um, I have not had an SEX 10 2 or 3, so I'm not familiar with these axles or this style of axle, but we do have a lot of camber in the front, and I don't understand why that is. We have camber. I understand that you know there's always a little bit of camber, a little bit of toe-in stuff for alignment, but it's a little bit much here. But it could be these big giant tires playing to that as well. They're giving us a lot of slop. But, yeah, so, you know, I I, I don't know if it's just me because I've shopped for entry-level RC stuff. Just just trying to find something to uh, experiment with. And I everywhere, Facebook and YouTube, all my ads have been showing me these things from different people every time. Different sellers, different stuff. So they are as cheap. I searched everywhere. I got this for $180 shipped from China. It's been on the way for, well, however long the coronavirus has been going around. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Just be careful where you buy them if this is something you're interested in because some places they will ship it on the slow boat and you may not see it until next year. Um, I actually have some parts lost in transit right now somewhere between here and the other side of the world. But... Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching, and uh, keep it scale. Hope we can make this thing scale. See y'all in the next one.